This is the first in a two-part video series that demonstrates how to use Blender to make this image of an alarm clock. Each of the individual parts of the clock are made by starting with a sphere and then just modifying the shape. The face of the clock with the four numbers is a bitmap image and I'll be demonstrating how to apply the bitmap image to the model. For these videos, I'll be using Blender version 2.66. We're going to be using the Cycles Render Engine for these videos, so you need to make sure that you have it. So come over to this drop-down menu and verify that one of the selections is Cycles Render. If you don't have it, then you can go to Blender.org to download the latest version of Blender. Let's start by creating a new project. So go to the File menu and select New, and then click on Reload Startup File. This is the default scene with a single cube object. I'm going to expand the section on the right by dragging the edge. If you're brand new to Blender, then there are a few things that you should learn. If you want to select an object, then right click on it. For example, this is the camera and I can select it by right clicking on it. Then to select the cube, just right click on it. To rotate the view, press and hold the middle mouse button while you drag the mouse. If you press and hold the shift key and then press and hold the middle mouse button, you can pan the view. If you press and hold the control key and then press and hold the middle mouse button, you can zoom. You can also zoom by using the scroll wheel. We're not going to use this cube, so let's delete it by first right clicking on it to make sure that it's selected and then press the X key on your keyboard and select Delete. Now we need to add a sphere. In Blender, when you add an object like a sphere, the object will be added at the location of the 3D cursor. The symbol right here is the 3D cursor. You can change its location by positioning the mouse and then clicking the left mouse button. To return the 3D cursor back to the center, press Shift-C. Now for all of the objects that I'm going to be adding during this video, the 3D cursor will be located at the center. So if you accidentally press the left mouse button at the wrong time and the 3D cursor ends up someplace other than the center, then just press Shift-C to recenter it. Now let's add a sphere. So go to the Add menu and select Mesh and then UV Sphere. Now press the number 1 on the number pad to switch to front view. In Blender, changing views is done with the number pad and not the numbers above the letters on the keyboard. If you don't have a number pad, then you can use the view menu. Here you can select the different views and you can also see the number pad shortcuts. We are currently in perspective view, but for this video I'm going to be using orthographic mode. So to switch to orthographic mode, press 5 on the number pad. The number 5 on the number pad toggles between perspective and orthographic views. Now pan the view to bring the sphere to the center. And again, I do that by holding the shift key and then I press the middle mouse button while I move the mouse. Now use the scroll wheel to zoom in. The next thing that we're going to do is to rotate the sphere. So press the R key on the keyboard. And now when you move the mouse, you can see that the object rotates. But we want to restrict the rotation to the X axis. So do that by pressing the X key. And now you can see that the object only rotates on the X axis. Now if I wanted, I could just use my mouse to rotate the object to the desired position and then press the left mouse button to complete the operation. Or, if you know how much you want to rotate the object, then you can just type in a value directly. In this case, I know I want to rotate the object by 90 degrees, so I'm just going to type 90 and then press the Enter key. When moving, rotating, and scaling objects, you can use the mouse for positioning or you can enter values in directly like I just did. In this video, I'll be entering numbers in directly most of the time to make it easier for you to follow along. Now press 3 on the number pad to view the object from the right side. I'm going to pan the view to center the object. And now we're going to be making some changes to this object, so we need to be in edit mode. And to do that, 
Click on this menu and then select Edit Mode. And we're also going to switch to the wireframe view. And to do that, click on this menu and then select Wireframe. While in Edit Mode, everything that is selected is highlighted with an orange color. If you press the A key, it will toggle between deselecting everything and selecting everything. We want to deselect everything. Now we're going to make the glass lens that will go on the front of the clock. So press the B key on the keyboard. This will allow us to select vertices by drawing a box around them. So position the cursor about right here and then press and hold the left mouse button. Then move the mouse to enclose the vertices on the left side of the sphere and then release the mouse button. You'll notice that the vertices that I selected start with the third column of vertices from the center. And now press Shift D to duplicate this selection. The duplicate will now move when you move your mouse. We want to restrict the movement to the Y axis, so press the Y key. Then move the selection to the left and click the left mouse button. Next we need to make this selection a separate object, so press the P key and click on Selection. Now go back to Object Mode by clicking here and then select Object Mode. Now right click on the glass lens to select it. We want to flatten it a little bit, so press the S key so that we can scale the object. And we want to restrict the scaling to the Y axis, so press the Y key. Then type 0.4 and press Enter. You can then grab this green arrow and move this over to the left. Now let's switch from wireframe back to solid. So press this button right here and select solid. Now you can rotate this a little bit to get a better view. And remember to rotate the view, just hold the middle mouse button while you drag the mouse. We can make this glass lens smoother by pressing the smooth button right here. Currently the glass doesn't have any thickness defined. So come over here and click on the Object Modifiers button that looks like a wrench. Then click Add Modifier and select Solidify. Then set the thickness value to 0.1. And now we're going to subdivide this object to give it more detail. So click Add Modifier and select Subdivision Surface. Down here in the Subdivisions section, Set both the view and render values to 3. Next we're going to set the material for this object to glass. So click on the material button right here and then click on the new button. Materials are selected differently when using the Blender Render Engine as compared with the Cycles Render Engine. We want to use the Cycles Render Engine so come up here and click on this menu and select Cycles Render. Now click on the Use Nodes button. Then click here to set the surface and select Glass. Now we're done with the glass lens. So press 3 on the number pad to switch to right side view. Then use the green arrow to drag the glass lens over to the right so that it will be out of the way for now. Now let's work on the front face of the clock. So right click on the sphere to select it, then go back into edit mode, then select wireframe again. Then press the B key so that we can select vertices using a box, position the cursor about right here, then press and hold the left mouse button, drag the box around these vertices, and then release the mouse button. You'll notice that the vertices that I selected start with the fourth column of vertices from the center. When we made the glass lens, the selection also included the next column of vertices to the right. You need to make sure that the current selection does not include those vertices. Now press Shift D to duplicate this selection. The duplicate moves when you move the mouse. Restrict the movement to the Y axis by pressing the Y key. Then move the selection to the left, then click the left mouse button. Next we need to make this selection a separate object. So press the P key and click Selection. Now go back to Object Mode and then switch from Wireframe to Solid. 
Now right click on the clock face object to select it. We're going to flatten it, so press the S key so that we can scale the object. We want to restrict the scaling to the Y axis, so press the Y key. Then type 0 and press Enter. The object disappeared because it's now in the center of this sphere. So grab the green arrow and move it to the left. Now switch to front view by pressing 1 on the number pad. Now we're going to be adding a bitmap image to the clock face object. I'm using a real simple bitmap image that only has four numbers on it. To add the bitmap image, make sure that the materials button is selected and then click new. The default material should be set to diffuse. To specify the bitmap image, click this little button on the right side of this white color. Then select image texture. Now click on the open button. This line specifies the path to the folder that contains the bitmap image. Now just click on the bitmap image and then click on the open image button. Now we need to unwrap the object and position the bitmap image on it. An easy way to do this is to temporarily change the screen layout. So come up here and click on this button and select UV editing. Over here on the right, Rotate the view so that you can see the clock face better. Then select Edit Mode. Then click on the Mesh menu and select UV Unwrap and then Unwrap. Now come over here to the left and use the scroll wheel to zoom out. Here you can see the clock face object overlaid on top of the bitmap image. To see the bitmap image displayed on the clock face object, Come over here, click this menu, and then select Texture. Now let's change the screen layout back to the default layout. So click on this button and select Default. To see the bitmap image displayed on the clock face, click this menu and select Texture. You can see that the numbers aren't straight, so we need to rotate them. So first, go into Object Mode. Then press the R key to rotate. Now move the mouse until the numbers are straight. And then press the left mouse button. Now let's work on the main body of the clock. So press 3 on the number pad to switch to the side view. Right click on the sphere in the middle to select it. Then go into edit mode. And then select wireframe. Next, press B so that we can select some of the vertices using a box. Then select the same vertices that we selected to make the face of the clock. The selection starts with the fourth column of vertices from the center. Now let's flatten the selection, so press the S key. Then press Y to restrict the scale operation to the Y axis. Then press 0 followed by the Enter key. Then move the selection to the right by grabbing this green arrow and drag in it to the right to about this position. Now press the A key to deselect everything. Next, press the B key and then select these vertices on the right. Notice that the selection starts with the second column of vertices from the center. Now flatten the selection by pressing the S key to scale, then press Y to restrict the scale operation to the Y axis, then press 0 followed by the Enter key. Then move the selection to the left by grabbing this green arrow and dragging it to the left to about this position. This is the back of the clock. Now go back to object mode and switch from wireframe to solid. You can also rotate the view so that you can see the front and the side. And if we want to switch from solid to texture, we will be able to see the numbers on the face of the clock. Next, Smooth out the edges of the clock body by pressing the Smooth button. And now we're going to subdivide this object to give it more detail. So click on the Object Modifiers button that looks like a wrench, then click Add Modifier and select Subdivision Surface. Set both the View and Render values to 3. Next we're going to set the material for this object. So click on the Materials button and then click on the New button. Then click this button and select Mix Shader. 
This lets us combine two different shaders. So click here to set the first shader and select Diffuse. Then click here to set the second shader and select Glossy. Now click in this white area to set the color. You can grab this dot here in the center and drag it to set the color. Or if you want to use the same color that I'm using, then press the hex button and in this entry box type 0068E7 and then press the enter key. Now do the same thing for the second shader. Click in the white area, make sure the hex button is selected, and enter 0068E7 and press the enter key. Now below the color button there is an entry box called Roughness. Set this to a value of 0, which will give the surface more shine. The value in this entry box specifies the proportions of the two materials that we are using. Set this value to 0.2. We're going to be using this material later, so let's give it a name. So click in this entry box and let's just name it Blue. Now let's position the face of the clock. So right click on the face to select it, then use the green arrow to move it over until the edge of the clock face starts to touch the clock body. Now is a good time to save our project. So from the file menu, select Save As. Here you can specify a directory, and this is the file name. I'm going to name this clock.blend. Blend is the extension that Blender uses. Then click the Save as Blender File button. Well, we've made the face of the clock, the body of the clock, and the glass lens that will go on the front of the clock. So that will conclude this video. In the next video, I'll demonstrate how to make the hands of the clock, the alarm bells, and the base of the clock. Then we'll render the final image. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe and leave a comment.